Hi everyone, it's Katrina from Anonymous Graffiti Artists Helping the Homeless to Rebels Destroying Their Own Work. Here are 10 of the most mysterious artists in the world. Number 10. Master of the Playing Cards This mysterious engraver was believed to also be a painter, either from Switzerland or from Germany. In any case, he caused quite the stir because of his beautiful artwork, including a set of playing cards in five suits, hence where the name Master of the Playing Cards comes from. The famous bicycle cards company says that the master of playing cards was the first innovator in playing cards, the first to focus on artistic integrity in their printing. People have argued for centuries as to the master's identity, and since no one can agree, he or she has been called the master of the playing cards. His work involved carving an intricate image into wood or metal before ink was applied to the grooves. That then formed an image that could be printed onto another surface. Whoever he was, he was an early pioneer of the technique. In total, he produced a little over a hundred engravings, including the playing cards, and had a distinctive style. Typically, engravers had a background as a goldsmith, whereas this master seems to have had a more artistic way of doing things. His engraving technique is very close to drawing, and much of his work was either religious subjects or animals such as birds, deer, beasts of prey, and wild men. While his work doesn't come up for sale very often, a piece of his titled The Queen of Flowers was sold at auction in 2006 for around $450,000. You can now see it at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Number 9. Philadelphia Wireman For some, there is a fine line between sculptures made of trash and actual trash. One day, art student Robert Leitch was out walking in the neighborhood of South Street, Philadelphia. This neighborhood was undergoing extensive renovation and many things were being left out in the street. Robert came across a series of wire sculptures just left out in the open for the garbage man, together with some drawings. Over time, he collected around 1,200 of these small sculptures, but didn't tell anyone really. The person who created the sculptures and artwork remains anonymous to this day. Quite how their artistic output wound up being trash is up for debate. It's assumed the artist died and people didn't know what to do with these wire nests which contain household objects like light bulbs, toys, and batteries. Eventually, the wire man's work was passed on to a gallery. At first, the reaction wasn't great. The art scene wasn't accustomed to what's referred to as modern-day neo-primitivism, and the pieces actually got some laughs. I mean, for most people, who wants a bunch of wire, plastic, foil, and batteries? It's not my favorite kind of art either, I have to admit. But the last laugh was on them, though, as the Philadelphia Wireman is now part of cultural history. Experts argue that the work is to fulfill the shamanistic needs of alternative religions in American culture. These are the words of Adams and Dahlman, not mine. Whatever the Philadelphia Wireman's identity, his or her work is believed to be an important transformation of ordinary materials. So there. Number 8. The Black Hand Graffiti is pretty controversial because it can be an eyesore and an act of vandalism, or a very beautiful art form and a way to transform urban space. One mysterious graffiti artist has been considered the latter, and is simply known as the Black Hand. He has been called Iran's Banksy, and is famous for his stencil art protesting sexism and other controversial laws and political events in Iran and the Middle East. He has been leaving subversive images at random around the city of Tehran. The Black Hand has been known to give interviews where he explains his work and what he's trying to do. This guy uses the street as his canvas to bypass the mainstream and immediately create an eye-catching piece. The public spread his message by taking photos of his graffiti and sharing them on social media such as Twitter or Instagram, which are officially banned in Iran. This is a pretty gutsy thing to do, as his political standpoint is against the law, and he is a wanted man. He has a great sense of humor and signs his art, Black Hand. Number 7. Above This artist had the unique and mysterious name of Above for years before finally revealing his identity. So while he has lost some of that mystique, he still qualifies for inclusion on the list due to his achievements in generating conversations around the world. Above has worked as a street artist in 60 countries and urban environments, where he specializes in stencils, abstract compositions, and murals featuring different layers, arrows, and text. The name Above comes from the artist's trademark arrow, which is pointing up. Simple, huh? So why did he choose to disclose his name? Well, there's nothing wrong with a little recognition, right? It's not like he hasn't earned it. Tavar Zawaki is an American who lives in Berlin. He had a thing for tagging freight trains with graffiti before relocating to Paris as a teenager. The rest is history. 
This renowned talent has an influence that transcends international borders as well as artistic ones. And now for number six, but first, be sure to subscribe and let me know your favorite artist in the comments below. Number six, Richie Edwards. Richie Edwards was a member of the Welsh rock band The Manic Street Preachers. Any fans out there? They came together in the 1980s as a punk and later alternative rock band. However, a tragedy has been hanging over them for nearly 30 years, following the mysterious disappearance of their guitarist and lyricist Richie Edwards at the age of 27. The missing Manic disappeared from the Embassy Hotel in central London on February 1, 1995. His car was found near the Severn Bridge soon after, and this is seen as a vital clue when tracing his whereabouts. His parents officially obtained a court order where he was presumed dead in 2008. Up until 2005, the other band members were still paying 25% royalties into his account, and legally, his estate and everything else remained in limbo. Last year, 2018, it was revealed the timings had been wrong when reviewing activity on the Severn Bridge, meaning Edwards had left in the early morning rather than in the afternoon. Could this be the breakthrough that his family, bandmates, and fans have been waiting for? His sister continues to search for him and is very active with the Missing People charity. What happened to Richie Edwards? Number 5. Skid Robot The mysterious Skid Robot takes his name from Skid Row, the area of downtown LA which is known for its homeless population. Beginning in 2013, he started creating exotic and idyllic imagery using spray paint. As graffiti goes, it's pretty unusual and is designed to bring something positive to one of the bleakest places in the country. What inspired Skid Robot, whose true identity has not been revealed, was the sight of a homeless woman asleep and an idea that came from his girlfriend. Rob's partner told him he should depict what was in her head by spraying a thought bubble containing money over where she slept. An artistic legend was born. Skid Robot has created a living art project which is an artistic movement that seeks to solve the social issue of homelessness through the power of art and design. He has done some interviews, always wearing a hoodie and a bandana or reflective mask. The goal is to change the reality for the homeless and to give them something to look at and enjoy in contrast to the dire conditions of Skid Row. He hopes to reveal the people behind the stats and crucially talks about how they're treated by society. A sad result is that his work can be easily removed and has even been stolen. But that is all in the life of a graffiti artist. Number 4. Master of the Furies this mysterious sculptor is at the center of one of the biggest artistic mysteries in the world. They crafted figurines of such exquisite detail that it's amazing their identity has remained a secret. All that's known about the individual dubbed Master of the Furies is that he worked during the 17th century and was very inspired by the Furies. Furies are ancient Greek deities. Taking on the form of women, they are associated with justice, vengeance, and retribution, and would punish the people for their crimes against nature. The master captured their furious movement and expressiveness in ivory. One of the most famous sculptures is of a charging horse. It's 16 inches long and carved from ivory like the others. For such a small size, it has enormous detail and almost looks alive. The sculptures have elongated limbs, drapery, and twisted, tortured expressions. In some, you can even see the veins bursting along the head and neck. The detail and the drama of the sculptures are still greatly admired to this day, but like the master of the cards, this carver remains a mystery. Number 3. Robert Johnson If you've seen the Coen Brothers movie, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou?, then you probably remember the blues musician who told a tale about selling his soul to the devil in exchange for extraordinary guitar playing ability. Do you remember? Well, the inspiration for the character was Robert Johnson, who died in 1938 in his late 20s, leaving behind a major legacy. Native to Mississippi, Johnson was known and respected not only for his distinctive playing style, said to be more like that of a piano player than a guitarist, but also his hard work ethic and fascination for music and learning from it. He produced 29 songs which caused a sensation when they were re-released in the 1960s. Of course, the artist was no saint and reportedly died after being poisoned by a man whose wife he was having an affair with. The exact nature of his demise is a mystery, but the biggest unknown of all was the fateful meeting with the Prince of Darkness, said to have taken place at a crossroads. Did Johnson really learn his skills from Lucifer himself? Whatever the mystery, there is no doubt he had talent. Number 2. The Toynbee Tiles The unsolved mystery of the Toynbee Tiles has been going on since the mid-1980s. The tiles could be found painted and embedded onto tiles in the pavement on roads from Philadelphia, New York, Washington, D.C. to Buenos Aires. 
the messages on the tiles are believed to refer to religious historian Arnold J. Toynbee, born in 1889. Some of the tiles mention movie director Stanley Kubrick and his groundbreaking film 2001. What connects Kubrick to Toynbee is the ancient prophet Zoroaster. Toynbee wrote about him, and Kubrick used a piece of music named after him for the Space Odyssey soundtrack. His other tiles reflect paranoia about the media and the mafia. It is believed to be a man who had the means to travel and knew a thing or two about roads and tar. Besides their crazy messages, how is it possible for someone to embed these tiles onto public roads without being spotted? Some of these places are highways, busy 24-7. Who created and installed these tiles? There is a movie called Resurrect Dead, The Mystery of the Toynbee Tiles from 2011 if you want to check it out. Number 1. Banksy Banksy is a graffiti street art legend. After 20 years, his identity still remains a mystery to most, although there are several names floating around as to who he is. His works have appeared all over the world, and his satirical messages capture everyone's attention and curiosity. Most of his fans don't want to know, as that would just ruin it for everyone. Banksy is considered the godfather of a new kind of pop art on the street, where anyone can see it. He was supposedly born in Bristol, England in the 1970s and began as a graffiti artist. Banksy started using stencils to create notorious images which satirized politics and made people think outside the box. His stuff is so sought after that the walls with his graffiti on it have actually been removed. Otherwise, they might face the wrath of city officials, property owners, and other street artists who destroy his work. There is much debate as to whether to keep it or clean it. He has done many art exhibitions and festivals and works with galleries, so while in theory he is anonymous, he is also a multimillionaire. In 2005, he put his own artwork in several museums in New York and in the British Museum of London. He is also a successful writer and filmmaker who loves to mock the art world and the people who spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on his art. Just last year, you might have seen what happened with his painting at a Sotheby's auction. Banksy installed a secret shredder inside the frame of his Girl with Balloon painting. Then, as soon as it sold for $1 million, someone with a remote pressed the button and the painting began to go through the shredder. However, the shredder only destroyed half the work, and now appraisers believe it could be worth double. Thanks for watching! Do you want to know Banksy's identity? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time! Bye!